Greetings, this is Michael Davis from Speaking CPR. Uh, today, I'm starting a series of weekly videos. These are about 10 to 15 minutes each. They're based on a program I have called Confidently Speak to Influence. What I, I would like to provide to you is just some, some complimentary ideas on a weekly basis from start to finish when it comes to presentation skills. Um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those below the chat box. Occasionally, you'll see me uh, make some offers to other webinars or programs that might help you go deeper into this. But this is complimentary, no obligation on your part. Enjoy, and please let me know how these ideas help. We're gonna start the series by going to square one. Uh, one of the biggest challenges that I had as a coach for several years was I was very good at teaching the technical side of speaking and storytelling. I could help you get your material and, and get the delivery down, but some of my clients were still struggling. And then it occurred to me one day, we hadn't worked on their mindset. They had all these negative ideas about speaking. And even though uh, technically they, were, they had the knowledge they needed, they were still struggling with these internal messages. Uh, one of the best analogies I've heard is it was like I was taking this computer, this older computer, whose, whose memory and drive were full, and I was trying to put more information on top, but we hadn't erased some of the old programs to make room for the new programs, would make, which would make them better presenters. So this is some information today that will help you erase some old programs and understand why people fear speaking. All right, again, this is based on my program, Confidently Speak to Influence. I like to start with the question, what is public speaking? One of my mentors is a woman named Patricia Fripp. She is a legendary Hall of Fame speaker, first female president of the National Speakers Association. And she's got a great line. She said, look, anytime you step outside of your house and talk to somebody else, you're public speaking. I'd like to take a little bit more of a specific definition, although I love that one. Most people think public speaking means somebody on stage talking to an audience. And that's true, that's the world I live in. But public speaking has a lot more connotations. And this, I love this slide that I was able to, to purchase. It gives you all kinds of definitions. It could be presentations, one-to-one, -one, sales talks, business communication. Uh, it may involve a speaker, may not. I mean, a, a microphone. It, it could be a journalist writing a an article could be a politician. So you get the idea. Public speaking takes on many forms. Now, a lot of what I talk about in this, this series will involve standing on a stage speaking to a group. But keep in mind, that could be speaking to two people. It could be speaking to 2002. The elements are the same. So let's answer this question. Why is public speaking the number one fear? Or why is it perceived to be the number one fear? I don't believe it is. And I know I'm jaded because I've been in this world for 25 years. It's how I make my living coaching other people and speaking myself. But see if this makes some sense to you. I think the question is the wrong question to ask. Are you afraid of public speaking? Here's why I think that it's the wrong question. Imagine this scenario. You're at a small municipal airport. One of those that just have those uh, propeller type planes, uh, Piper Cubs, things like that. You're given a choice. We're either going to strap a pack on your back, put you in the plane, fly you up 10 to 15,000 feet and push you out the door of a, perfect, a perfectly fine plane with the hopes that the parachute opens and you land safely, or you have to give a five minute speech to 50 people. Given that choice, most people will choose the speech. So I believe this whole notion that's evolved that public speaking is the scariest thing we can do, it's contextual. Here's the first reason that people fear speaking, but I'm not convinced it's the most, it's the scariest thing we can do. I've done some research and I've, found, I've always heard about this magic list out there. Now I've seen different lists from different sources about the number one fear people have. Now here's a list. <clears throat> you might notice I've made some slight adjustments and you'll see down at the bottom, this is a list I've created from a bunch of websites that I read. 
supposedly public speaking is number one, death is number four. Okay, let's, let's dive deeper into this because I don't buy it. The real fears that people have is one is fear of public humiliation. That is terrifying to most people. The second is walking into a room full of strangers. So if you combine these two, the potential of humiliation with a room full of strangers, what do you get? Public speaking, right? The potential exists for that humiliation in front of a group of strangers when you're speaking. And this is why people perceive it to be such a scary experience. But that's not where it stops. The second reason is we've all had bad experiences. For me, it occurred back in 1969. It was an overcast day in, this, in, in Harrison, Ohio, and the lights were off in Mrs. North's first grade class. It was nap time, and all the kids were resting their heads on their desks, <clears throat> all but one. He was standing on top of his desk because as Mrs. North had said, Michael, since you love standing on your desk so much at lunchtime, you get to do it at nap time so everybody can see you. This, again, this was 1969. It was the height of the Apollo program, and I was a huge space fan. I wanted to be Neil Armstrong. So that afternoon, it had been raining during lunch, so I decided to jump on top of my desk and begin my aeronautical career. Mrs. North didn't agree with my choice, so I'm standing on my desk during nap time. Now, what do you think my loving, supportive friends were doing? If you say that they were pointing and mocking me and silently taunting me, you're exactly right. And the longer I stood on that desk, the smaller I felt and the more I just wanted to disappear. Even though it was a cool fall day outside, I was sweating profusely. This was literally 50 years ago, and I don't remember how long I stood on that desk. All I know is that every second felt like an hour. And by the time Mrs. North said, you can get down now, Michael, I hope you've learned your lesson. Trust me, I had, because I said in my little six-year-old brain, don't ever stand in front of people again. That was scary. And for the next 25 years, I had this internal battle. I wanted to, I love entertaining people and making them laugh, but every time I got a chance to stand in front of a group, I was terrified beyond belief. In fact, in elementary school, I gave up the opportunity to play in the band because I knew people would be watching. In high school, I thought about going out for the drama club because my dad had told me, you'd be a good actor, but I knew there'd be people in the audience. And in college, I thought about getting up and trying stand-up comedy at an open mic night, but again, the people there, they would be laughing. See, that little voice was always in the back of my head think, saying, remember the desk. And it wasn't until I was literally age 31, it was a 25-year period where that fear held me back until the day I sat in my boss's office and I was, I was threatened with a job loss. I had to deal with this fear. Now, that experience for me was... I don't want to use the word traumatic. It was hard for a six-year-old kid, and it planted an idea in my brain that standing in front of people and speaking is terrifying. Guess what? That's not the worst thing that could have happened. There are people out there, maybe you watching this, that you've had something much worse happen in front of a group. Others, maybe not as bad, but it is something I believe everybody's had at one point, saying doing something really stupid, which is a human characteristic, right? We all make mistakes but it left an imprint on me. There's a third reason. We are wired to be afraid. And here's what I mean. This is a great book written by, written by a professional speaker named Scott Birkin. Love this, Confessions of a Public Speaker. And I mention this to you because Scott brings up an excellent point. He said, think about our earliest ancestors. Long before we had technology and communications, before we were even writing, had formal language, or we were reading. We communicated through stories, and we had to stay in packs. What happened to the individual who got separated from the pack for whatever reason? That person was alone, 
without a weapon, out in the open, and all these eyes were looking at them. Now, it wasn't the eyes of their tribe members. It was eyes of creatures like this guy or this group. And they look hungry. Chances are, if you got separated from the pack, you were either in danger of being eaten or you were eaten. So that genetic coding, that teaching has been passed on biologically for thousands and thousands of years. So what's the message we have when we stand in front of an audience just the same as our ancestors? You don't want to go AWOL. You don't want to be alone without a weapon out in the open with all these eyes looking at you. So it's no wonder that when we stand in front of a microphone or behind a microphone in front of an audience, we have this subliminal message. Oh my gosh, you're in danger. Because what happens when you're on stage? You're alone without a weapon. Yeah, you might be able to pull the mic off the stand and start beating a few people over the head if they attack, but you're not going to get too many of them. So for all intents and purposes, you have no weapon. You're out in the open and all these eyes are looking at you. But they're not there to eat you. You'll hear more about that in just a moment. The point of this is that we are wired to be afraid of speaking at first glance. It's just how our ancestors had to deal with the world. They've passed that on to us. In fact, scientists and in, in research in the past decade have gone deep into understanding the impact of presentations and storytelling on the body. And what, we have so many biochemicals in us. One of those is cortisol. It is the stress hormone. It gets triggered when we feel uh, flight, fight, fight, flight, or freeze. But their research has also shown that there are some positive reactions we have when we have a good experience in front of audiences. One is the release of oxytocin, which is the bonding hormone. We've got dopamine, which is the pleasure hormone. And we've got endorphins, which help with euphoria. I know these, all, uh, these biochemicals also have different reactions, so don't chastise me if I don't have the right ones or I haven't listed all the effects. Bottom line is positive experiences can happen when you've got the right mindset about speaking. So the reasons why we are afraid of public speaking is number one, society has been telling us that, that it's the scariest thing we can do. Number two, we've each had bad experiences. And number three, we're wired to be that way. The point you should take away from this more than any is that there is nothing wrong with you if you're afraid of public speaking. What is wrong is if you allow that innate fear that we're born with to manage your emotions and to keep you from speaking and presenting to others. And here's why. We have a higher brain that's developed in, in, in recent gener in, in the past few thousand years. I don't know how long it is actually. I'm not a scientist. But we have the ability to understand this fear, feel it, and manage it. And with that said, I've got one other super secret tip for you. One of the biggest challenges that I've had with, with, with some clients is that they have this feeling that audiences want you to fail. Nothing could be further from the truth. Actually, audiences don't want you to fail. They want you to exceed at a very high level. And why is that? time. They are way too busy to take their time to get in their car, drive to a venue, find a place to park, maybe in inclement weather, walk into an auditorium or a meeting room, sit down and listen to you bomb. That's not what they want. Yeah, I know maybe one in a million, there's a sadistic person out there who takes great pleasure in watching you fail. Those people are too busy trolling Facebook, Twitter, and all those other feeds today. They don't even get in their car to do that anymore. So don't worry. I mean, if you're not, if you, if you don't believe me, let's turn the tables. Is this how you feel when you are getting ready to go see a speaker? Do you want to take your valuable time and watch them just be terrible? No, you want something of benefit. You want a new insight on life. You want a tip or a trick that will help you uh, feel better, make your life better, make it easier, make you more money, you know, pick a benefit. You want that person to succeed. So if you ever have that thought, just remember, you don't want your time wasted, neither does your audience. They want you to succeed because it will be in their best interest. So to wrap up this whole concept of why are people afraid of speaking? Number one, 
we have to look at our definition. Public speaking can take many forms. It is standing in front of a large group. It's a one-to-one -one presentation or a prospective client. It's the local politician standing up at a, a, a local chamber of commerce to talk about some political ideas. It's meetings in your own home. It has different connotations. Number two, we've got the wrong focus. Without context, it can seem like the scariest thing you can do, but when you think about being pushed out of a perfectly good plane with a backpack that you hope does open up with, with a parachute, you've got a different context, it's not so bad. Society's been telling us this for way too long. We've each had bad experiences, some worse than others, but they can leave a negative imprint on your nervous system and it can hold you back. We're wired this way. This is something our earliest ancestors passed on to us. And number six, people want your success when you're on in front of a group because it, then it benefits them. So if you have any questions, please leave them below in the chat box. I'll be happy to answer those for you. Uh, type it in the chat box or you feel free to contact me, Mike at Speaking CPR. Again, this is a weekly series that I want to just help you step-by-step uh, step become more confident and have more influence anytime you give a presentation. I hope this has been useful in helping you understand why people are afraid of speaking and giving presentations in front of an audience of any size. Before we go, one of the most important and, and really critical aspects of giving presentations is to tell meaningful and impactful stories. If you'd like to go deeper into understanding how to tell stories and, and how to create stories that sell more of your product, service, or idea, in, uh, on November 15th, I've got a one-hour webinar where we'll take a deeper dive into this topic. Specifically, what you'll discover is why stories are your best communication tool. And number two, you will learn the seven keys to memorable storytelling. And third, the most powerful storytelling formula that helps you sell more of your product, service, or idea. If you'd like to take a deeper dive into this topic, this is a complimentary webinar. It's going to offer you some world-class insight that I've picked up from my mentors over the years and have used in my own story, speeches, and coaching. Uh, this will help you create those meaningful and memorable stories that will increase your influence and impact. Feel free to join me in two weeks on Friday, November 15th. Here's the link. It'll be at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. I'll also put the link below in the chat box. So again, if you have any questions at all about this particular complimentary webinar or what you've seen today, email me, Mike at Speaking CPR, or leave some comments in the box below. If you found this first session to be helpful, understanding why people are afraid of speaking, you're probably going to want to answer the question, how? How do we manage these nerves and anxiety? That's what we'll cover next week. How to manage speaking nerves and anxiety. Now that you understand why, let's get into the how. So thanks again for joining. Hopefully this has been helpful. Join me next Friday, and if you want to dive deeper into storytelling, make sure you click on that link and register for this complimentary webinar that will be on November 15th at 12 o'clock. Talk to you then. Have a great weekend.